was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. If you are joining us from home, online, on Facebook, we are glad that you are with us. A um, couple of announcements. Um, I heard from Marsha Stevens earlier this weekend. Um, she and Simone have to go back to Sioux Falls so that they can make an adjustment on the shunt. That's going to happen on Tuesday morning. Marsha has asked for additional prayers as they make that adjustment. Um, and so if you'll keep Marsha and Simone and their family in your prayers, they will appreciate that. Um, also, Justin's here, and he's going to give us the update on how Melissa is doing. Oh, um, she's doing really well. Actually, her and Stacy went back to Rapid uh, to stay there instead of paying for her hotel there in Denver. Um, she goes back on Thursday to get a stint taken out, and then she's good to go home for good. So um, everything's okay. Good. okay. <laughs> Miracles happen every day, don't they? It's a gift. It's a real gift. Are there others that we need to be aware of? We're delighted to see Eileen with us this Yeah, Eileen is back today. I want to thank Pastor Ruth and my church family for their prayers, for their cards, for their visits, and for thinking of us. It meant so much to us. God bless you. We'll, we'll keep praying for continued yes, restored so health there, because that's a, that's a long road to it's a long keep going. Long and also, Sylvia Glazeman is here. Yay. So, yeah, I haven't seen Sylvia in so long that, um, you know, I, I had to do a little um, pre-visit with her on Thursday afternoon as we were at the beauty shop together. So, um, so it's, it's good to see you out and about, Sylvia. Also, a little sadness in the heart today because we are sending our beloved Adam off to Platt where he will Oh. <laughs> but, 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 not clapping for that. <laughs> we, we, we are, well, we'll clap later. <laughs> at least twice at a time. <laughs> so anyhow, you'll hear more about that a little bit later, but um, in, in, in the music ideas, um, Valinda and I kind of decided that um, nobody would complain if Adam sang longer than I preached. <laughs> so, 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 so that, 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 that. <laughs> All right, I see. <laughs> with, with that in mind, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is just in all his ways, kind in all his doing, and near to those who call his name. We will speak praise of the Lord and bless his holy name forever and ever. Let us pray. O oh God, we are witnesses to your glorious power. All of the works of your hand give thanks and praise to you. Your steadfast love and faithfulness sustain us. Your strength and power uphold us. Your presence assures us that you are watching over us, guiding our steps, keeping us safe. Therefore, we will join our voices in praise and worship, blessing your name forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together. Make your presence known, 
soothe our fear and anxiety. May we pray to confidence in your sure provision and guidance according to your will. Amen. My friends, God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, a new life has begun. We can be at peace knowing that through the saving work of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Jesus continuing to pray. 
that the way of Jesus would become a movement around the world. And now in this day and age, we still continue those prayers. We continue those prayers for each other, for restored health and healing. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who struggle. We pray for those who anticipate new things and additions to family. We pray for each other. We pray for the church and we pray for the world. I don't know if you've been watching the news headlines as they've come through during the week, but they've been COVID, rise in COVID cases with this new Delta variant. I discovered that there's also a Lambda variant. Um, if they get too many more, they're gonna run out of Greek letters for the alphabet. It, it frightens me ever so slightly. Horrific flooding in Europe and India. Um, we had flooding even in the United States this past uh, several days. How many times do we see those headlines and say, Lord have mercy, God help them. I wish we could do something to help. Thoughts and prayers is one way. Always, always prayer. Because I can assure you that God hears each one of those prayers, even if it's uttered, oh Lord. God hears the prayer of our hearts, knows the thoughts in our minds, and answers those prayers according to God's own will. This is why Paul models the prayer for the church and for those who come after, hoping that they too will adopt that attitude of prayer. Because we can't do it alone and we can't do it without each other. But through God's spirit and the work of prayer and the ways God answers, we can do anything that God asks of us. Will you pray with me? Loving God, we give you thanks for all who are gathered here in this room and with us online in worship and in spirit. We ask your blessings on the world, oh God, that you would hear the prayers of our hearts even as we struggle to find the right words for them. We ask, oh God, that as we pray for one another, we would be reminded that Christ also continues to pray for us and hold us in that embrace of prayer and love. May we recognize the roots of love that dwell deep within us and go into the ground for a solid foundation in your love. We ask your continued blessing, O oh God, as we seek to be your people and to serve your people. For we pray in the name of Christ and all God's people say, Amen.
the Old Testament, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 42 through 44. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing food from the first fruits to the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elisha said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servant said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left. He set it before them and they ate and had some left according to the word of the Lord. And then from John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him. For he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to take him by force and make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately, the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Unexpected generosity, miraculous abundance, and paralyzing fear. Now I want to talk about the paralyzing fear first because that's the most frightening. When I was in seminary, I heard a phrase that I think I will never ever forget. As students, we're trying to figure everything out. 
and we're coming in and we go, our education, this is great, we will have all of the answers to the world's problems when we finish. Now, I don't know how it was for my classmates, but I myself personally came away more petrified of what was coming in ministry than I felt settled of having all of the answers. And so the questions would come, well, would you do this or would you do that? And I was indecisive. I was not able to arrive at an answer. And so I would never make a decision. And I worked with a spiritual director at the time, and as we were talking and processing on this anxiety and fear, she said, you know, Ruth, there is this phenomenon called paralysis by analysis. We overthink. I even have the t-shirt that says, overthinking about overthinking. Overthinking causes anxiety. Logic is a stumbling block to our faith. And this is what happens in these stories, both in the Old Testament with Elisha and here with the crowd of 5,000 with Jesus and his disciples. We need to feed these people. How are we going to do that? Because we really have next to nothing. A few loaves of bread, a couple of fish. How really are we going to do that? And Elisha and Jesus both say, don't sweat the details. There will be plenty because the Lord has said it will be so. But imagine that for the hundred people who ate and had leftovers with Elisha, I imagine that they looked at that little bit of bread that they started with and said, wow, that sure went a long way. But that crowd of 5,000 with Jesus and his disciples, we're going to have a riot, Jesus, if we don't get this right. Make the people sit down. Distribute the bread and the fish, and everybody will eat their fill. And they did. Logic dictates we won't have enough. Faith provides the possibility for God to do miraculous works. Logic gets in the way of God being able to do the things that God does. Our fear and anxiety paralyze us, keeping us from stepping out on faith to say, all right, Lord, this is your show. Let's see what you got. Not in the tempting your Lord idea, but in that opening of ourselves to say, all right, Lord, here we go. Your will. In spite of my anxiety, in spite of my concern, in spite of the lack of bread and fish and probably water or wine, your will, O oh God, your will be done. Faith is scary like that, isn't it? I would imagine that for a college graduate heading out to his first big real jobby job in the world, moving to a different part of the state hundreds of miles away <laughs> from his and his church family, <clears throat> I'm not picking on anybody, but there has to be an element of fear that's associated with that, and everyone in this room will understand this idea of fear and anxiety. And yet, we go. Why do we go? Because the Lord is calling. You would not be going there, if we had our way. 
But the problem is that the Lord will have the Lord's own way. And so you will go with the Lord's blessing. And we will stay anxiously awaiting a visit, a return home. And this affirmation that God is at work, even in the midst of our doubt, it's not unfaithful to doubt or question. It's not unfaithful to be afraid. In fact, those are all signifiers that faith is real and strong and can be stronger if we open ourselves up and say, Thy will, O God, be done. If it is your will that we feed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, then it will be done. If it is your will, O God, to be fed by the first fruits and five loaves of barley for a hundred people, thy will be done. For the disciples on the boat, the waters coming up, maybe sloshing into the boat under the heavy winds, and the darkness just before dawn, as Jesus walks out, the disciples, remember, are miles out from the shore. And as they are trying to get Jesus to come into the boat, they reach land. It is a fearful appearance for Jesus. It is unexpected. It is startling. Do not be afraid. It is I. Okay. How'd you do that? Doesn't matter, but we're here now, so let's get out of the boat and go on to the next thing. Fear is integral because it is a benchmark, a milepost marker. <laughs> it is integral to building our faith. Because we remember that one time when we were so scared. And we went beyond the mile marker anyway and experienced abundant blessing. Sometimes it is what we expect. Sometimes it's hard, it's painful, it's frustrating. Other times the anxiety drains away in the midst of, what was I afraid of? For Jesus, for his disciples, the work of the gospel is to go into the world and love one another. The work of the gospel is to go and feed, to go and lay hands on, to go and touch people's lives. To go, in some cases, to their own death for the sake of the world knowing the gospel message of the love of Christ. To experience that gift of grace, knowing that they are beloved by God, claimed, called by name, and then sent forth. This is all the journey of faith. And it comes through unexpected generosity. A young boy saying, well, this is what I have. You're welcome to it if it'll help. A model of faith that provides miraculous provision. All in the face of and alongside our own fear and anxiety. That when we step out of that grip, we move into a place where God is present and revealed to us in miraculous provision. Now, I 
think that this meal, this simple meal of fish and bread with leftovers, an abundance that left baskets of leftovers, was strength for the journey of Jesus and his disciples. But it also put faith in the hearts of those who were fed where they would revert to logic so that they could see God revealed in the abundant feast. God is being revealed to us every day. Where do you see God? Where do you see God? I won't make you answer the question because it feels like it's a test and school's not in session. But where do you see God? Do you see God in the sunrise or the sunset and the glorious colors painted across the sky? Do you see God or maybe really rather hear God in the blowing of the wind and the falling of the rain such as yesterday morning? Do you have God revealed before you in the face of a young child or a newborn infant? Do you see God revealed as you come together in fellowship and care and love and projects with one another? Do you see God revealed in the seasons churning? Spring as daffodils and crocus pop up through the ground cover announcing spring is here. Do you see God in the greening of the trees and the blooming of the blooms and the harvest of the fruit, apples, peaches, pears, cherries, what have you. Do you see God revealed in the patchwork quilts of color in the autumn as the trees show their glorious beauty? Do you see God in the blizzard, and in the guy who's running the bobcat to clear a parking lot so that you can either park your car in that space or get your car out of that space? Do you see God revealed in the renewal of the world? And most importantly, do you see God in the faces of each other? God is being revealed in unexpected ways, in miraculous ways, in spite of and alongside of fear and anxiety. God has gifted us with logic and intellect and also given us strength and courage to step outside of our own will and understanding in order to submit to the will of God who calls us, claims us, loves us, sends us, dwells in us. My friends, this is the love of God incarnate. And we see God's face in each other and around us. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able let us declare what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
recognizing that all that we have and all that we are comes from God, let us now give back to God our gifts and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward? on this new adventure that you would calm 
all of the anxiety and flutter of butterflies as he begins his first year of teaching. Let the music of God that he has so richly shared with us be a blessing for his students and be a blessing for him. We ask these things, O oh God, knowing that you cherish each one of us as your beloved children, and we pray for this, your beloved child. Amen. Now, we have to do this last piece, and I'm going to invite you to stay seated if you want to, but it's kind of fun. But you shall, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands, clap, clap. The trees of the field will clap their hands, clap, clap. The trees of the field will clap their hands while you go out with joy. So Adam, this is our sending. And the instructions are, we're going to see what you say, three times? Okay, so Melinda will start off at a eight pace. And then the second time, she'll pick up the pace just a little bit. And the third time, she'll have a tempo that has us running for the refreshments afterwards. <laughs> but you have to wait, because then we have a post lead after. Ready? Amen. Please stay safe.